Thank you for coming. This session will focus on how to maximize pair and group work when you have a whole group film project. Uh, my name is Julie Lopez, and this is Scott Duarte, and we both work at the University of Delaware English Language Institute. So we have rather small classes since we're an IEP, but I've also taught in Vietnam at a university and had very large classes of 50 students and done film projects with them as well. And I'll let, you, uh, I'll let Scott share his background. I've also uh, done these projects. So I worked in Japan for four years where we did film, uh, Korea for four years where we did some film, and um, I also gave presentations and workshops of this in the Middle East. So we've done these projects with heterogeneous language classes, homogeneous language classes, uh, large classes, small classes. It can work in low level, high level, any of the above. Exactly. So what we're going to go through is we'll just share why make the effort to do a video project, um, things that we've learned from our experiences over the past 10 or so years, and then how we have now created projects that surround a theme, and the steps that we follow with a bunch of example projects that will hopefully inspire you, and you'll get some ideas of things that you can take back to your context. So why collaborate and why spend a lot of time preparing a film project? It is a lot easier to assign a PowerPoint presentation. Um, I also do a bridge program, so we transition students to the university, so I'm aware of the types of classroom settings now. And it's true that they will take a few classes that are very large, that are not very interactive, but really at our university, the University of Delaware, they are moving a lot more towards problem-based learning and interacting in the classroom. They just finished this new interdisciplinary science and engineering lab with all the classrooms designed to deal with group projects and technology. And so it's really helpful for the students to be able to incorporate technology into their projects, even at the freshman level. So that's why we make a case for spending the extra time and effort if you're willing to. All right, so why collaborate? Well, we all have learned about collaborative learning techniques where students are sharing their ideas with each other. Uh, film projects usually have students of, or three to four students in a group. So they're working together. They are planning, they're brainstorming the activity. They're writing the script together. They are storyboarding the ideas together. They are filming, of course, together. They're giving directions. They're learning to use the language to negotiate their ideas and to work within each other or work within the framework to accept other ideas. So it's not just language, but it is life skills that they're learning as well. And these projects, they have an invested project at the end that they care about. So it's not just, oh, how do you share your, your opinion, yay or nay, I don't really care what you said, but they really care and they have to work through the frustration, which is more real life. I, so um, one of the, the projects that I did, I involved them in every step of the process, and I just wanted to put this clip here, and they're sharing about the roles that they played. So one of the ways I got them to speak more English is we did a making of the movie afterwards where they interviewed each other about the whole process and then I compiled that together. I just wanted to show a little clip of you, of, of them, so you could hear what kinds of roles that they uh, played. Uh, the process uh, through which we went uh, was very organized. Uh, the first step was uh, brainstorming the ideas and each student have to give the idea he have and we have to see what's the best idea to, for, for, for the film class. Uh, we had uh, to vote on which is the best movie. In order to, do, to choose the best idea, uh, we have to, to see if it's uh, the, 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 the difficulty of doing it or if it's appropriate mm -hmm. to show to the ALI students. Then after that, uh, uh, when we choose the best idea, we 
had another pr presentation for each one to explain why he wants a specific role in the film. And the second one was uh, to choose and give the best role for the best person to do it. Uh -huh. My role was uh, the script writer. I wrote, uh, I described the place where the film will be and I give the actors uh, the script to say in the film. And I think it is a big role in the, f in the movie because it's, I think it's the main point because you will build everything. They will build everything on your responsibility. After that, we are starting shooting the scenes. I was the uh, director and I was responsible for directing the cameraman to shoot uh, from different angles and uh, different perspectives. And um, the second thing I was responsible for was directing where actors should stand and how they, hi how they move. Directing is a stressful and grueling role that needs a lot of focus. I was so challenged and inspired that it pushed me to overcome this challenge. All right, so there's just an idea of, that was one way I added more language, is them making the making of film afterwards. So what do you need? You saw a lot of equipment that we used. You don't necessarily need to use all of that. We'll go through just the basics here. All right, so the first thing that you need basically is a camera, and you can have Lots, there are several different types. You can have your standard camcorder, and most camcorders now work with uh, recording straight to an SD card, so it's easy to plug it in. Hi, Katisha. And the quality is much better. It has a larger lens, larger sensors, and so forth. But you don't need that. You can use your point-and-shoot cameras that you already have, or that usually schools have. But you don't even really need that. You can use your smartphones now. And most smartphones have nice cameras. They have come with video um, features, video recording features. They also come with video editing software or apps. So you can do it all in your camera. So there's lots of different possibilities now that weren't available a few years ago. And it's really important, since we're language teachers, to have good audio. So I've experimented with how to get that. If you don't have a mic, just make sure your camera is closer to the person speaking and you're in a quiet environment. Um, if you have a really cool director like ours, you could get the Zoom H4n and get really nice audio quality. But even another per student's cell phone, if there's a lot of apps that can record the audio that way and you can add them to the video later. Or you can even buy Audio-Technica lav mics for 20 bucks as long as your camcorder has a mic jack. So that's, that's one good thing of using a camcorder versus using your smartphone or using your point and shoot, that it has an audio input uh, jack so that you can get better sound. All right, so once you have the footage, what do you need to do with it? How can you process it? How can you edit it? Macs come standard with iMovie. PCs come standard with Movie Maker. Uh, Movie Maker is a very basic editing software, but it will do the job for just cutting, um, editing, copying, pasting, things like that. It has transitions, it has a few titles at the end. iMovie is a little above that. They have other effects that you can do, like green screen or um, tinting the footage. But if you just need something simple, either of these two standard software applications will be, uh, will suffice. And you don't even have to have this software. If you want to make your project um, really collaborative, you could have the students just create a YouTube site together and all be able to log in. YouTube Video Editor is free. It has one layer of audio that you can add. So you can just upload each clip separately and then you can choose from your video clips under this account how to splice them together and add transitions. Um, we Video has also come out, I think, in the past year, and they are targeting schools and classrooms for students to have a joint account. There's a free version with one layer, but you can upgrade and get more editing features that way. These are both all online, so if you don't have a good internet connection, don't use these. <laughs> 
So we want to also just let you know from our experience where we have found our video projects wasting a lot of time and the students are standing around or they're not really using the language. So these are time drains. Okay, so the first one is the equipment. The higher quality equipment you have, the more professional it looks. But the more, the steeper the learning curve is to learn how to use it effectively. And I've had grants where I've had large, uh, high quality equipment, and you really don't need that. The students don't need that. What they need is just something to record them in front of the camera and capture nice audio. So keep it simple. Just a standard camera, hopefully a microphone to get better audio, and you're good to go. Another time drain can be taking too much footage. So the solution to this is spend more time in the pre-production so that the students come more prepared. They aren't spending most of their time laughing and making mistakes, right? That wastes a lot of time. So have them write the script. Have them practice it. Make sure they've storyboarded the action beforehand. That can save a lot of time and keeps it a lot more language focused. Um, another, so maybe they do do that, but they come unprepared in terms of their comprehensibility. So they actually sound like minions. Maybe they're prepared, but the audience cannot understand them. So the solution I found to that time drain of trying to coach them and they do multiple takes just so people can understand them is have them practice with at least five people before the shoot and I give them a worksheet to make sure they get the signatures and whatever the language focus is, I have the person giving feedback on that so that they come in a lot more confident for the shoot and you don't have as many takes, which again would more takes would add up in footage that you have to edit. All right, so the next time drain can be camera angles. The more camera angles you have, the more dynamic the, the footage looks like. But it takes a long time to teach them, and the more camera angles they shoot, the longer times it takes in the editing stage, the post-production. So keep it simple. Have them Tell them, okay, give me two different camera angles, and you teach them the various camera angles beforehand, but again, you just keep it simple. So I focus on, if you want to do a lot of camera angles, focus on the quality. Keep the video short. Tell them, this is just one to three minutes, and we're focusing on the quality of the video. If you want a longer video, don't include all the camera ang angles and focus on quantity then. So really determine beforehand what you're looking for. So the ultimate solution, though, is making well-crafted projects with a theme. So this is a whole semester theme. This isn't like a one-time theme. And then you have all these small projects that you add together at the end of the semester, and you have a big project. So we're going to go through um, just how this, with the benefits of these. One is they have a larger audience at the end, whether it's parents, we show it at our graduation. We show it at a big film event. So a larger audience is very motivating. Peer pressure. So they're in groups of three to four students. Everyone has a role. So the students who are usually less motivated receive peer pressure from the other students to contribute, to own up to what they need to do, to be responsible so that the whole group produces a very good video. And I haven't always seen that work with PowerPoints. They're willing to come completely unprepared. But when it's a bigger project, they take more ownership in it. So really, a film project works on both the fluency aspect as they collaborate to produce it, and also on the um, accuracy, because they have a script that they have lines for, and that's where you work on um, the pronunciation, the oral grammar aspect. All right, so our steps in creating these projects. So pre-teach the content. If you're doing a story-based film, then you talk about the elements of a story, which are the same as in literature that they might be reading in their reading writing class. You talk about character. You talk about plot. You talk about setting. And you set all of that up. Then you talk about selecting a theme for their overall project. And you elicit this so that the students feel they have a greater ownership to it. You show them models. If you've been doing this 
for a long enough time, then you can use past student films. If this is your first time, then go onto YouTube. There's plenty of student-generated multimedia out there to show them, to inspire them, and tell them that they can do this. Okay, once you have the theme, then as a whole class, you start brainstorming what kind of characters, what kind of events, what's the main conflict, what's going to be the rising action to that climax of the movie, and so forth. You, break the, you have your overall theme, you have your overall story arc. You divide it into different sections, different scenes, and each group now is responsible for that scene so that the whole class doesn't have to worry about putting, producing and filming the entire movie. Then people are just standing around, but if each group is responsible for just one or two scenes, it makes it a lot easier to get it completed in a shorter time frame. But if this group, group A, is doing scene one and group B is doing scene two, they need to have a good transition from the first scene to the second to make it fluid, to make it continuous. So you need to teach them how to transition. These groups need to collaborate with each other to make sure that the characters' personalities aren't different, so they're not schizophrenic from one scene to the next. So you need to have each group work with the group that, whose scene precedes it and who follows it. So there's a lot of group collaboration, class collaboration. They're working with each other in many different ways. So after they have their plan established, then you want to make sure they take the time to practice it. And I usually have this outside of class or designate a small portion of time before class. And like I said before, I have them talk to at least five people so I know that they get enough practice. After that, then film. So most of these steps, we're now step eight, all these steps are pre-production. That's where most of your time should be spent. And I haven't always done that, and it doesn't turn out as well. So I really want to encourage you, pre-production is key. When you film, um, I don't like having the students just stand around not doing anything during that time. So I assign each of the group members who are watching the, the person being filmed a, a task. Maybe you listen for word endings. You listen for the nonverbals. And then after the first take, they give them feedback. So everyone has an active role in that. Then step nine is edit. You can have them do it individually and combine it, or they can all sit around one computer or use WeVideo, YouTube Video Editor, and um, edit collaboratively. And then, of course, the final step would be sharing it. And again, I give them a task at the very end to reinforce the language that we talked about. So now we really want to just show you all the different ideas and the projects that we have come up with. And hopefully, there will be some that you say, ooh, I could do something like that. OK, so the first one is chart your own path, which is based on choose your own adventure. If you grew up in the 70s, 80s, you should hopefully you read the choose your own adventure novels, where you don't go from page to page. You jump all around choosing which way you want your character to go. So my class decided to do this. We based it around a bank robbery. So that was our overall theme. Then we had our main characters. We had the mime, which was the bad guy. Sounds scary, the mime. And we had the hero. So I shot the introduction. And then each group was, it broke off. And you could, the audience could choose, do we follow the mime or do we follow the hero? So that's group A, group B. Then two story arcs develop with the hero. And so do you choose the hero to save the day or to escape? So that's group C and group D. Then if you went on the mime, you had plan A and plan B. And I won't give it away. You can watch it later. And again, that was group uh, what E and F now. So all of these groups are doing their own individual sections, but they have to collaborate with the preceding group to make sure that it's the story arc continues in a logical way. Everyone down! No one be a hero! You, Mr. Security Guard! 
Don't even think about Mr. it. Mr. Frost, stay down! On your stomach, don't even breathe funny! <laughs> Good versus evil, right versus wrong, man versus mime. Which path will you chart? What are you doing? Did you just call anyone for help? If you decide to die, just try to do it again. Now move. Guys, Perfect. watch them carefully. I'm going to grab the money. Watch out, dude. You'll be shot. That was so close. Yeah, I owe you one. You? Now I have a gun and a sword. <laughs> I have the money, guys. Let's go. Don't move. You are oh, under arrest. Oh, please, man, here. Here's the gun. I am sorry. Hey, what's up, Captain? Did you bring the car? Yeah, it's here. And you are late, guys. Go, go, go. This is PPC Bank and we have a problem. Well, well. In this case, we'll go to plan B. I heard some noise inside. You go check that out. <laughs> Alright, so when we showed this to the entire audience, I mean, we had a big theater, and so we would stop it after the first one. Okay, so what did you choose? And of course, everyone chose to go with the bad guy. I don't know why. And then they chose plan B, he lived and escaped. Plan A, he was captured by the police and taken to jail. Okay, so the next story arc that we went, we uh, chose the theme of daydreaming in class, something all of our students know very well about. So as a class, we filmed the beginning and we filmed the ending to kind of set it up. And then each group was responsible for creating their own daydream so that that would be the filler between the uh, beginning and the end. So you're just going to see very a couple of snippets of their daydreams, not the full thing. See you for some time. I am lost in my mind. So today we're going to talk about our next essay assignment, and we are going to go to the exciting world of cell division in science. Yes, students, mitosis versus meiosis. Let's first watch a brief video that might help explain it. Yeah, I can split your cells up. Wow. I, 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 I can split your cells up, girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I can split your cells up. It's chromosomes, yeah. if you do this and you are multicellular somatic cells. Mitosis is divided into forming stages. We got pro meta and a an cellular phases. Oh, the is oh my gosh, you're scared of me. You? What about me? You almost made me fall. You have been watching. What are you doing here? I told them not to stand anywhere here. Okay, fine. Go ahead. Just jump. Oh, God. I can't focus anymore in this boring class. I feel so tired and I'm so hungry. I wish I were at home right now. Sitting at my desk and doing my home. Wait a minute. That is not what I want to do. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Wearing my fancy pyjama, laying in my comfortable sofa, watching my favorite TV show, and waiting my lovely wife to make my favorite breakfast. Hmm. Here we go. Pancake. Wow, I like this dish. Let's put some syrup in it. Come on. Come on. More syrup. More and... Hmm. Oh, oh God. We're still in this boring class. I didn't even eat my first bite. Oh. Okay. Tomorrow we'll go in. All right, so you get the idea and it can go through and they each develop one. Um, you saw at the very beginning that I had the students work through each part of the 
the film process and they voted, so it was a little bit more like the real production process. And again, since we were going for quality and I was involving everyone, we kept the video very short because we used a lot of camera angles. So this is the resulting three minute action comedy that they came up with. Good morning, guys. Oh, hi, teacher. Hi. How are you? I'm good. You are trying on second place. Oh, come on. Better than yesterday. Yeah, kind of. Uh, well, I decided to start and get ready for you. Thank you so much. Anytime. Today, we're going to talk about how to do a research paper. What, what do you think, Martha? Well, according to Longman, a research paper is a research paper uh, is, is to study a subject uh, in detail, is, uh, especially in order to discover new facts. Hi, Bruce. Stop speaking in Arabic. Hi, Bruce. Stop speaking in Arabic. Okay. Come on. What did you say? Well, uh, I said uh, what, what's here uh, in the long run. A research paper, a research is to, to study a uh, subject in detail, especially in order to discover new facts or, uh, or test new ideas. Thank you. Learning. Hey, everyone. This is your last warning. Get out. Leave now. Right now. Come on, why? Leave now. I'm not going to leave. Leave now. OK. This class is boring anyway. Really? Yeah. So let me out of there. And by the way, did anyone tell you that you are more What did he say? Oh, he just called you idiot. Really? Get you! Fast! Hey, son. You look lovely today. Thank you. Yeah. Hey bro, wake up. Sorry, sorry. So that was the resulting film that they created all together. Um, another idea that we had is you can have each group make a movie trailer in a different genre. And I saw a really cool video on Vimeo, if you're familiar with that, called Plot Device. And this was a guy who had a magic button and every time he pressed the button, he would be transported into a different kind of movie. So that, I thought that was a clever idea. So if you have some type of transition like that, it can link all the different projects that the students make. Um, so you're familiar with genres, and for time we're going to not show an example of that. But we did have Lego stop motion uh, trailers for that one. All right, the next um, project that I did was storybook reading. And so I do this to have the students really work with pronunciation and working on linking and reduction and so that they're not worrying about, a lot of times when we give them pronunciation, they're reading something, but the words that they're reading are at such a high level that they have a problem with just reading of it, so you can't really worry about the linking aspects or the reduction or so forth. So children's books are an excellent source to work on this. So we do that, but we also use the green screen to kind of put them into the actual storybook. And so that's what we're going to look at now. 
I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his thought. And he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. Then he slunk to the ice box. He took whose feast. He took who pudding. He took roast beast. 3,000 feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. And what happened then? Well, in the Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grow three sides that day. Yeah, you! You did it! You're done! You made it! You're through! Oh, what a great moment! Now, what will you do? There are so many choices. The world is immense. So take a look around. Some like to go fast, some like to go slow. Some like to get going, however they go. Do you need lots of friends? Or only a few? So each student was responsible for what they wanted their page to look like and how they wanted the action to take place and what angle. And then as a class, we also worked and added ideas together to help each other. OK, the next one is a mockumentary. Well, this was kind of a mashup of two different ideas. So Julie and I like The Office a TV show, the sitcom The Office. And so we thought it would be a great way to, a great project to do the ESL classroom kind of mockumentary style of what's going on in there. So we had that premise where we would pull them out and interview them about things that are happening. But we also mashed up with a parody of 10 Angry Men. In another reading writing class that they had, they were reading the book and comparing it to, to the original movie, 10 Angry Men. So we did, uh, or I'm sorry, 12 Angry Men, because we did 10 Angry Students. That's ours. <laughs> so it, it was so well received that the teacher who was teaching the read it, watch it of the 12 Angry Men actually teared up at the movie because it was so faithful to the original production. So class, we looked at different types of advertisements this session. We looked at product advertisements, uh, political advertisements, branding advertisements. We also looked at public service announcements, PSAs. We discussed different genres of film, documentary films, uh, dramas, thrillers, sci-fi. Also, we looked at action movies. You can't forget those. So as a class project, your final project, you are going to have to make a choice between either filming a public service announcement or to do a big Hollywood blockbuster action movie. Now this isn't going to be an individual project, not a group project, it is a class project. So as a class you have to unanimously decide on either the PSA or the action movie. We have two choices, action movie and PC. What do you think, guys? <coughs> I think, Hassan, <coughs> why don't we vote first and see how everyone feels? OK. Who wants a PSA, please raise your hand. OK. And how about action? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be fun. Um, yeah, do you really think uh, those uh, students in ELI who take will uh, who take will like uh, PSA. Uh, yeah, come on, Barry. I don't think so. So um, yeah, they won't escape uh, an escape taking from homework and also yeah from homework uh, from presentations and research papers. Why don't you agree with us and finish this discussion? 
I cannot make take any decision without talking about it, sorry. The fault now is three to seven. I think we need to take a break for a few minutes. Okay, let's take a break. Guys, I don't know if you should smoke there. Go away. Ah, guys, I'm sorry. We shouldn't smoke here. We broke the rules. And we have a bigger problem with our government. All right. So that was just a snippet. It was actually a 20-minute film. But you get the idea how everyone can play a role in speaking that way. Um, if you are teaching an EAP class, which is generally what I end up doing these days, I thought just having PowerPoint is not as exciting. So I was watching TV and they have a show called Worst Case Scenario with Bear Grylls. Bear Grylls is just very entertaining, as it is. But as I was watching that show, I, I was realizing how much education and facts and research they had to do for each of those episodes. So I came up with some topics that the students could choose from, and then in groups they each developed an episode of worst case scenario. So I had a small class this session, and one of them chose nuclear power plant meltdown as one worst case scenario, and the other one was if you're imprisoned in the US. So here's just a part of the nuclear power plant meltdown, and they each had to decide what part of the big episode they were going to do and transition in between those. So I just took little snippets to show you. Hello, everyone. This is another episode of the worst case scenario. And today, we want to introduce a topic about the nuclear power plant meltdown. Uh, let's start by the Raymond's explanation of the power plant operates. Thanks for the introduction, Sam. So now I would like to explain how nuclear power plant generates energy and transforms it into electricity. That's how a nuclear power plant operates. Um, thank you, Raymond. Well, talk about the benefits and harms of the nuclear power plants. I'd like to start with the benefits of the nuclear power plant. Well, everybody knows that the nuclear power is produced by the, there's a kind of material called uranium. And the world reservation we have right now is enough to produce the energy to meet the human need for one million 980,000 years. So that's just the first part of that project. Um, another academic type project was about cultural values. So the students watched a lecture um, on Garrett Hofstede's Five Cultural Dimensions. And then throughout the session, we looked at each in more depth, and they each illustrated one of those points. So I just took out uh, one example to show you. And again, as in the other ones, I modeled first as a class how to produce it. So we did the first part together and then they had the individual parts. Usually, when we work with people from other countries, we will find subtle differences that could result in major misunderstandings. What you're about to see is a brief review on how different we are and how knowing our backgrounds could let us make friends easier. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. 
Did you have a blast last night? Actually, no. Why? What's the matter? Last night, I went to dinner with my Japanese roommate, and when the waiters asked for the check, whether we want it separate or together, he said separate. What? What's the matter with that? What? He just messed up. How? It's rude. It was off base to pay your own bill. In Saudi Arabia, you would destroy your relationship if you pay your own bill while you eat with a friend. That's a bummer. He probably just wanted to be polite. In Japan, we are more individualistic than Saudi Arabians. Too bad for you. <laughs> That's so they, <laughs> we did that for a bunch of different cultural values and they had different film projects. Um, in a two hour workshop where we had Brazilian teachers come to our institute and I was giving a, a less, um, ideas about how to use video, we created this um, idea. So instead of just doing a newscast, I had it focus about a special report, maybe like a CNN special report. And then the idea was you can create different small video projects throughout the entire year, throughout the entire semester, and you can link them together with a host. And so you can cover all the chapters in a book if you're forced to follow a book in that way. So here's just a few of the different activities. So we created this in two hours. Of course, the pre-production and preparing for this was pretty time intensive on my part. Um, so that we could get through everything in two hours. Um, and again, you're seeing, we're using a lot of green screen just because it makes everything look great. And really, it is simple to use green screen um, to replace the backgrounds. So here's a bunch of little clips from that project. Hello, this is the DPI program special report. I'm your host, Carlos. The 2014 World Cup is just around the corner and Brazil is thrilled to host this year's big event. In this report, we'll look at the history of the World Cup, we'll explore two of the host cities, and we'll talk to one of the players and coaches. Let us now go to uh, Moisa for more on how the World Cup started. The World Cup was held for the first time in 1930 between France and Mexico, and since then the World Cup was held every four years. Thanks to Chani, that was awesome. We'll be back after a message from our sponsors. M&M's are chocolate pieces that love the Brazilian World Cup. The World Cup is going to be held in some very important cities, São Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. João Carlos has more on that. The best place to be visited in São Paulo is Mercadão Central. It's a marketplace in which you, where you can find everything you need, especially good fruit from all over the world. Have you ever been to Rio de Janeiro? Do you know what are the best places to visit there? The best place to visit in Rio de Janeiro are the Christ Redeemer and the Sugar Loaf. Besides being a spectacular attraction, Christ Redeemer is one of the seven world wonders. And going to Sugar Loaf, you will have a breathtaking view of the wonderful city. Another exciting place to visit in Rio is Copacabana Beach. Uh, it's always very crowded, so it's a wonderful chance to see beautiful people because it's the most touristic city, uh, beach in Rio. Thanks, girls from Rio. That was really, really interesting. I'm going to buy my own ticket. And now we have some more information on this kind of topic with Sandra. She's going to talk about a uh, tourist's opinion. So, how do you feel about the World Cup being held in Brazil? Oh, I feel really frustrated because although it will happen here in my country, I won't be able to go because it's too far from my city and very expensive for me. You know, I'm worried about the World Cup held in Brazil. Uh, you know why? Because we have other priorities in Brazil like education and health issues, you know? I'm inspired about it. 
because um, I will show that it's opportunity to show foreigners how wonderful my country is. So um, for those clips, maybe you heard the music and thing, um, some of the videos in the background. I use a site called Video Blocks. You can try it out for 10 days free. And if you wait long enough when they are bothering you about purchasing it, they will get it down to $99 a year. And I think it has been very worth it because it has tons of audio, sound effects, I mean music, video clips, um, After Effects projects, if you're into that. And then I don't have to worry about all these copyright issues. Um, so for that project, I just had the, the teachers email me pictures that they had chosen. So all the content really came from them, except for the transitions. I, you probably guess I wrote that out. So Julie, you didn't do that in uh, two hours. The filming was two hours. Yeah. The, the writing the script and the filming was two hours. The editing... Probably was a half hour, because I already had everything laid out, and I just had to replace the backgrounds. Because you just had two hours with those teachers. And that was only part of that, too. I only had two hours. So I was trying to show them different types of video clips. So I'm saying, if you do the pre-production, you can really get a lot accomplished in your class time and make it really language focused. But again, that's the pre-production that really does help. You said that's called video blocks. Yeah, videoblocks.com. Mm -hmm. If you come close, I'm sure an ad will come up about it. They're really pushing it. So this is mostly class time they're using. Is there a ratio between class time and out class time? For, for the earlier um, videos that you saw, the bank robbery and the daydreams, the class time was only for, for the daydreams, the initial introduction and ending. And then they had to film on their own as homework their own individual daydreams. For the bank robbery, everything was, all the filming was done out of class. And so it took students about four hours to film, to shoot their individual. So every day one group went. And so we were able to knock it out in a week of actual just production. How do you deal then with, I noticed some of the groups were all the same first language. Mm -hmm. My classroom, um, our film classroom, we have it wired so that we can put up cameras so that they know they're being filmed. When I did this in Japan, I would have a cheap camera and assign someone the role of documentarian. And so they were to film the behind the scenes, but I used the behind the scenes to spy on them to make sure. So by the end of the session, the semester, um, one group said, we don't even need the documentarian. We are just talking. And they were a trustworthy group, so I believe that they were just going in their L2. And it was a monolinguistic culture. So, How, how can you, here's an, an issue. Are you dealing with, are you reinforcing uh, non-standard English? For example, the girl in the last cut was saying, I'm tired about it which idiomatically would be, I'm tired of it. Yeah, and this was a two-hour workshop. I didn't, yeah, but I have, I didn't, that was for teachers of English in Brazil in a workshop, and I didn't have time to correct, to go through all those steps. But how, how much attention do you give to that, that issue? That's why in the pre-production, we want them to write out their script. We want them to mm -hmm. show us so that we can work on getting the right prepositions, the right... Uh, verbs and the right verb tense and work with them through the grammar of what they want their characters to be saying. It still happens though. It but it still happens, yeah. <laughs> I've had it still happen even when want to know how, what you can't control what at, at the lower level, I do it as a fluency builder, just getting them to use the language. And if they make those errors, so be it. I just want them trying to converse, trying to work in English. At the higher levels, that's when you start saying, mm, okay, we need to go back and work on this. This isn't how it is. You use the infinitive followed by this verb, not the gerund and things to that extent. I also address that by having the students, when they're finished with their own project, they have to go back and evaluate the whole thing, and I give them points on whether they were able to catch 
and identify their errors or not. So I try and address it that way if it still got caught in there. Question. Um, what strategies have you developed to deal with uh, free writing in, within the groups, kind of at maybe not equal levels of input, but, but also kind of absenteeism or crit critical times, for example? They do get a group grade, but within that, I also give, I can tell who's been contributing and who hasn't been to adjust that grade so that they don't get really penalized if there is one lazy student or so forth, someone not uh, contributing as much. I do the peer evaluation form, which I took from a business class at the university, and they use that exact form. So it's a good way for me to also say, this is how Americans rate each other, and they're not going to play favorites with each other. Um, so to give them an idea of what's expected at the university level, too, and then they end up being a little more honest. Um, before we take the next question, if you want to go to your next session, that's fine. There is no other session for this room until 1 o'clock, so we can continue the, the questions, the Q&A, if you want to. But feel free to, to leave. There are business cards up here for Julie and myself. Um, can you just go to mm -hmm. the next one? A lot of the student uh, samples are on my uh, YouTube website. If you just type in Scott Duarte or eslstudentpublications.com, they have a lot of different types of um, activities. Green screen, stop motion, choose your own adventure, a lot of ideas. Please do. Mm -hmm. so Go ahead. The absence of women on all of these, so I'm wondering what you do with the Saudi girls. Usually, um, I'm teaching a film content class. It's kind of, we have an EAP track and we have a cultural track. Uh -huh. And so it's uh, embedded in the cultural track. So a lot of the Saudi women don't take it. Or uh, that's why I developed the stop motion, so that they're not in front of the camera because they're happy to lend their voice, they're happy to film and do that, but they just don't want to be in front of it. So that's why we've been moving more to a stop motion animation. Or before I've Thank created you. like two versions, if it's important with to have the nonverbal um, cues, then I film them one with it in front of the green screen so they can evaluate that, but then I can also take them out and they still have the picture behind Thank and you can you. hear the voice to, for the others to see if they're worried about that. Uh, how tricky is the green screen? It's not. It's really like easy. Any green As, piece of material or yeah. paper will work? Yep. Does it matter the color of the green? The, the first no, year that I did really. it, I had green poster board, 99 cent Hate. poster board, and it was kind of lime green and I just put like a, a 12 by 10 part on the wall mm -hmm. and did that and it was fine. Now we painted the back wall of our room. And it's a darker green, but any green will yeah. do. Any green will work. Yeah. yeah. You could also go to the craft store and just get a big roll of material. green. Yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Why is the, I wondered if you, no, uh, you have a program called Splice. Okay. Go ahead. No, I haven't used it. Check it out. One of my students last quarter showed it to me. It's free. It's a free app on iPhones. Oh, okay. So I use a rubric. Um, there are technical aspects of it. Um, how well their audio okay. is, and that's cool. pronunciation Thank Thank as you. well as just being able to hear it. Um, video techniques and editing techniques, but then it's whether they fulfilled the requirements, the language requirements uh, that are built into each project is the more substantial part of the rubric. So that, yes, I expect them to try to do as best job as possible, but if their film, because they've never done it before, is not very good, they don't get hit that hard on their grades for that. Do you change the rubrics per each assignment, or do you have the same one that you use for? Usually, it's, it's fairly standard. Thanks, sir. It's just the assignment okay. parameters change, so. Would you be willing to share this? Of course. Um, email me, and I'll love to email it to you. All right, question. Why is it mostly green? You can do um, iMovie, you can do blue also, but. You're wearing blue. I'm wearing blue. It's blue is a very standard color. It's green's not as standard. Um, in the high, high end software, you can do any color you want. You can have a red screen. You can take out all the red. You can take out all the white. 
but they found that the green is the easiest one that isn't usually in it's, people. Because it's not in your facial complexion. If you get red, you, oh. you know, if you have a little bit rosy cheeks, now your cheeks start disappearing. Oh. So green, that's why they chose green. Okay. Thank you. Do you do any kind of copyright uh, protection issues with your students that are you know, permission to post, that sort of thing? How do you deal with that? I've been, I've been. Release forms or whatever. Yeah. I, I definitely do release forms, yes. Um, You're welcome. Thanks. Even when I was in Japan and I didn't really need it because their copyright is not really an issue, I would always get release forms. And so I had one student um, who said, okay, you can show it in our big presentation, but I don't want it on YouTube. So I did that, or I would just edit out her section mm -hmm. if it didn't affect the storyline. And But yes, we respect that. Yeah. It is important, especially in the US. What's your timeline for like a three minute? start to finish for a few minutes. Live action or stop motion animation? Uh, live. Live action. Usually, I would still say almost a week pre-production, a week production, and then a week post-production is how I ran it in Japan. Class no, 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 no. This is usually Outside the pre-production is class time so that I make sure they're on the right track. And then, so if they have to do storyboards, that's homework. And then they come in and they talk about the storyboards, if they actually did it. That's our hardest thing to get them to do. And then they get, so the whole group um, agrees on the path that they want to take for their scene. Then they start writing the script, and they'll go home, and they'll write the script for homework. Mm -hmm. And then they'll come in, and they'll compare, and see what they like, and compromise, and build one big script. And that way, we can overlook that process as well. But the filming is usually outside of class. And the editing is inside of class. I'll give them one class period or two class periods and then say, OK, if you're not finished, the rest is for homework. And I like to do the filming in class, but I don't have them use as many camera angles. Like in the uh, worst case scenario, they just do their part for a couple of minutes, and they can change the backgrounds on their own. It's very easy later. So that doesn't take much time at all. That was like a week project to do the research, to do everything, practice it, and then film it. It, it is, but it's backwards. In, <laughs> in, most, in most software, in logical software, and I love iMovie, but it's not logical, you would put the green screen on the main component, and then you would add whatever background you want. But in iMovie, you have to put the background for the main component on the bottom. and then put the green screen. So you have to figure out exactly how long of a background you want mm -hmm. the time differences. So that's why I say it's not logical. Because if your, let's say your green screen clip is 12 seconds, but your background, you only put it in for 10 seconds, it'll cut that last two seconds out. You can add it back in. You can always add it, but it's just it's using math, which I hate. I, I have had trouble getting green screen to work in iMovie. I think that the two keys to using green screen in iMovie are, one, you have to make sure the advanced features are on. So if you can't find it, it's because the advanced features aren't on. Which is in preferences. <laughs> yeah. The second thing is that always remember that the background's on the bottom. Background's on the bottom. The green screen clip is on the top. If you get the order wrong, it'll never work out. And then you just adjust the time from there. So I don't think, if you know those keys, it's not hard to do. Um, but it can be very frustrating if you don't realize a couple of those points. So watching you know, a three minute tutorial about it on YouTube is definitely worth it. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know anything about green screen before I started this, and it was just YouTube tutorials, and it was watching 10-year-old boys do it and then figuring it out from them. I created a handout with all the screen shots, too. If you want that, just email me, and I can send it. And that You can give your students, or you can use it, too, for both Movie Maker and iMovie. Movie Maker doesn't have green screen, though. If you're going to purchase a program, though, there's a $50 program called um, Power Director. Um, Actually, Education 
discount. It's about 30 bucks. That one is a lot better than iMovie. Um, but it just depends. Do you want a free program? Are you willy? What? No, it is only PC. Yeah, it's a PC one. 